Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. Life is not guaranteed at all, but death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله صلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers of Madani Channel We welcome you once again with another new episode of our program that goes by the name of the perished kings of the past. As usual, again in today's episode, we've brought another new topic for you, another oppressor of the past who challenged the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who challenged the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ultimately met his doom, ultimately became a perished king, a perished individual of the past. Before diving into our today's discussion, let's first of all listen to the virtue of sending peace and salutations upon the noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. The many benefits and blessings of sending peace and salutations upon the noble Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam and according to one narration, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam has stated that he who sends salawat upon me once, Allah Almighty showers ten mercies upon him. He who recites salawat upon me ten times, Allah Almighty showers hundred mercies upon him. And he who recites salawat upon me hundred times, Allah Almighty inscribes between both his eyes that this person is free from hypocrisy and fire of hell. And on the day of judgment, he will keep him amongst martyrs, amongst shuhada. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So dear viewers of Madani Channel, in the history where we come across many such individuals who challenge the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we also come across those individuals who Allah, oppressed and tyrannized those who were very, very beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who were very close in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, we will be talking about that despicable individual who tyrannized and oppressed the beloved grandson of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Today, we will be talking about Yazid and his companions, that how they tyrannized and oppressed Sayyiduna Imam Hussain Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu and what a dreadful end they met and what a sign of warning and admonition they became for the coming generations. Those who oppressed the Ahlul Bayt, those who tyrannized the Ahlul Bayt, those who stopped the supply of water upon them, those who stopped the supply of food provisions upon them, those who set the tents of Ahlul Bayt ablaze, those who robbed the Ahlul Bayt, they themselves could not live in peace for a very long period of time. They who oppressed the Ahlul Bayt, the main reason was to get the rule, get the governance of this world. But eventually, the same rule, the same governance for which they oppressed the Ahlul Bayt, they could not even enjoy that rule, that so-called rule of theirs for a very long period of time. They could not even breathe peacefully in this world, despite having the apparent rule. Still, they couldn't even breathe peacefully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them a sign of admonition for the coming generations. The name of Sayyiduna Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his companions is widely acclaimed. Everyone, everywhere is taking their name. But the names of the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt has become a means of admonition. It has become a symbol of disgrace and humiliation. Inshallah, today we will talk about Yazid and his companions that what a dreadful end they met. And inshallah, we will learn those 
Madani pulls from it that those who disrespect the Ahlul Bayt, those who hold enmity against this noble household, what horrific end do they actually meet with? Sayyiduna Abu Shaykh Rahmatullahi Ta'ala states that once some people they were sat down and they were discussing that anyone who rendered even slightest bit of help in martyring the Ahlul Bayt, whoever played any kind of role in this heinous crime, they eventually faced some sort of calamity or punishment. So this is what they were discussing. And a person who was present amongst them, he pointed towards himself and he said, look at me, what happened to me? Nothing's wrong with me, nothing happened to me. And he was amongst those who were also involved amongst those unfortunate people who were involved in martyring Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. So he boasted upon him himself and he said, look at me, nothing has happened to me. What are you guys talking about? So after saying this, this accursed person, he got up and started to adjust the flame of the lantern, those oil lamps that used to be back in those days. He started to adjust that flame. And now that accursed evil person, he caught fire from that flame of lantern. And the fire was so severe that he would scream everywhere, fire, fire. But the fire would not go down. It wouldn't extinguish to the extent that to save himself, he jumped in the river Euphrates, but still the fire would not get extinguished. And eventually this accursed evil person met his end being burnt with the same very fire. Even the water of river Euphrates did not extinguish that very fire. Sayyidina Mansur bin Ammar rahmatullahi ta'ala states that those unfortunate and accursed people who kept Sayyidina Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala no hungry and thirsty, they faced such disgrace and humiliation, rather they fell prey to such an illness that they would gulp up a whole vessel of water, but yet their thirst would not get quenched. They were the same people who kept the beloved grandson of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, hungry and thirsty in the plains of Karbala. Imam Zuhari rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi stated that those who were involved in oppressing Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu were either killed or they died turning blind or their faces turned dark. Another narration states that there was an elderly person who didn't eventually himself take part in oppressing Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in martyring Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, but he was eventually involved with those people. He didn't physically, practically um, take part in martyring Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, but he helped those. He was involved with those individuals who themselves were physically involved in this heinous crime. So that old man, he once saw a dream that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has rolled up his sleeves and he has a bare sword in his hand. And ten such people who were involved in martyring Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they were beheaded over there. And when the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam enraged and said that you increase the number of those who martyr my son after this, hot needles were applied to his eyes and when he woke up, he had turned blind. This was the end of that unfortunate individual who himself did not uh, partake in martyring Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, but he helped those who was involved with those who martyred Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Sayyiduna Naimuddin Muradabadi rahmatullahi ta'ala states that Mukhtar Saqafi had issued a command that wherever the army of Ibn Sa'd is found. Now, who was Ibn Sa'd? He was that accursed individual who crossed all the limits in oppressing Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala and the Ahlul Bayt. So, the command issued was that wherever the army of Ibn Sa'd is found, they shall be killed. So, after Mukhtar, he issued this command, the treacherous people of Kufa, they fled to Basra. And they were the same oppressive, tyrant and filthy people who did not even refrain from oppressing the children of the Ahlul Bayt. Now, 
they were hiding at different places to save themselves from the wrath of Mukhtar. The army of Mukhtar kept chasing them. Whoever they found anywhere, they were making them meet their dreadful end. Their houses were desolated, they were killed, and their corpses were set ablaze. This was the end of these accursed people that they met. Those who forgot everything just for the sake of the wealth of this world. Those who did not even consider the relationship of the beloved Prophet ﷺ. This was the end that they themselves met. Now, dear viewers of Madani Channel, remember that what goes around comes around. And you reap what you sow. You get reward or punishment depending upon what you sin ahead. Regarding this world, it has been stated that this world is like a cultivating land for the hereafter. Those who sacrificed their lives upon Imam Hussain and upon the Ahlul Bayt, those who devoted themselves to him attained success in this world and in the hereafter. And those accursed people of the Yazidi army, they were humiliated in this world, they were disgraced in this world, and the punishment of the hereafter is in addition to this. Those who were loyal to Imam Hussain, those who were loyal to the Ahlul Bayt, they sent this loyalty, this piety ahead for the hereafter. Hence, they will be rewarded immensely over it. In the Yazidi army, they sent the greed of this world ahead. They sent oppression and tyranny ahead. So this is what they will reap in the hereafter. So dear viewers of Madani Channel, do not engross yourself in the love of this world. Don't oppress anyone by falling prey to the greed of wealth, rule or power. Live as the humble people of Allah Almighty. The blessed lives of the Ahlul Bayt is like a guiding beacon for us. Their blessed lives possess humility, humbleness, asceticism and disinterest from this world. Those who live their lives following them attain success in the both worlds. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allama ibn Jawzi rahmatullahi ta'ala states that I saw a person whose face had turned extremely dark and was severely deformed. He says that after looking at him, I asked him, O oh person, what happened to your face? Your face used to shine like a moon. The refulgence of your face was famous and acclaimed amongst the nobles of the Arab. What has happened to you now? Now, dear Wizard of Madani Channel, this very person was the one who tied the blessed head of Imam Hussain with the horse. Now, he started mentioning his state. He states that during the night time, two people approach me. And what do they do? They hold me firmly and take me to a fire. Then the fire blazes itself on my face. This is how I am entrapped in this punishment. And this is why my face has darkened and deformed. Eventually, this oppressive and accursed person died suffering the same punishment and met his dreadful end. It has been stated that another elderly person that was supporting those who oppressed and tyrannized Sayyiduna Imam Hussain he didn't oppress them himself but he was involved with the oppressors. Now he once saw the beloved Prophet wasallam in his dream and he saw that there was a tray of blood present before the Holy Prophet wasallam. And the Holy Prophet وسلم, would dip his blessed fingers inside that tray of blood and he would place a mark on each of the murderers of Imam Hussain. Now, when it was his turn, he said that, Ya Rasulullah, I'm not amongst those who martyred Imam Hussain. Now, the Holy Prophet وسلم, said that you were supporting the oppressors. Then the Holy Prophet وسلم, dipped his blessed finger in the blood and placed one mark on him as well. When he woke up, he had turned blind. The dear Islamic brothers, what do we learn from this? That even those who support 
the oppressors, those who were against Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, even they will not be saved from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He need to be amongst those who are devotees of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, not amongst those who follow those who oppressed Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now, there are many people who Ma'adullah unfortunately talk ill of the Ahlul Bayt. We should stay away from them. We should ensure that we stay away from them and safeguard our Iman. There's severe warnings for those against those who talk ill of the Ahlul Bayt of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Mansur Rahmatullahi Ta'ala states that a person was seen whose face was deformed into a face of swine. His face had completely deformed. He was Ma'adullah, the one who would curse and talk ill of the Ahlul Bayt. Once he saw in a dream that Imam Hassan Mujtaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu was complaining about him in the court of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam looked towards him with raged eyes and said, You curse my Ahlul Bayt? Seeing this, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cursed him and put his saliva on his face. When he woke up, his face was deformed into a face of swine. So dear viewers of Madani Channel, we should ensure, we must ensure that we stay away from those who talk ill of the Ahlul Bayt because a company has effect. We should be amongst those who are devotees of Imam Hussain and the devotees of the Ahlul Bayt. And we should preserve of our Iman, of our faith in this way. Now, let's talk about another individual, another filthy individual whose name was Ibn Ziyad. Who was Ibn Ziyad? He was amongst the leading individuals in oppressing Imam Hussain and the Ahlul Bayt. He also met a dreadful end. What happened was that Ibn Ziyad was also killed along with his companions. It is stated that when Ibn Ziyad was beheaded and his head was placed amongst the heads of his other companions. Then a noise roared all around saying that a snake is there, a snake is there. And a snake came and entered one of the nostrils of Ibn Ziyad and came out the other. And this kept on happening many times. So this is how Ibn Ziyad met his dreadful end. Number one, he was beheaded. And number two, after his beheading, a snake would enter his nostril repeatedly and come out the other. Another very accursed individual, another leading individual in this heinous crime was Khali bin Yazid. Who was Khali bin Yazid? He was he who separated the blessed head of Imam Hussain from his blessed body. He used sword on that blessed head that was kissed by the beautiful delicate lips of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Those noble individuals were distressed and oppressed whose eminence has been mentioned in the verses of the glorious Quran. Now, what happened to Khali bin Yazid? He was eventually captured by Musar Sakafi. He was brought to him by Ibrahim Ashtar and Musar first of all chopped his hands off. Then he chopped his feet off. Then Khali bin Yazid was hung on the gallows and when he died, his dirty, filthy corpse was thrown in fire. This is what Khali bin Yazid, what end he met. And now let's talk about Yazid, the despicable, the one who actually initiated this heinous crime, who was blindfolded in the love of this dunya, in the love of the wealth of this world, in the love of the rule of this world, who crossed all the limits in oppressing and tyrannizing Imam Hussain and the Ahlul Bayt, those who were fortunate, those who were true devotees of Imam Hussain, they crossed all the limits and all the bounds to devote themselves towards Imam Hussain and the Ahlul Bayt. They sacrificed their lives, everything that they had. They crossed all the boundaries of proving their loyalty for Imam Hussain and the Ahlul Bayt. And on the other hand, 
there was this despicable and evil, accursed individual called Yazid who crossed all the limits in oppressing and tyrannizing Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Yazid also died a horrific end. There are many narrations in this regard. In one narration it is stated that Yazid had kept monkeys and eventually one monkey bit him and he died due to its infection. Another narration it states that he drank a lot of alcohol and because of this he fell prey to many uh, ailments, many illnesses of the stomach. So he died being trapped in one of the illnesses was defecating. One of the narrations state this filthy end of this filthy individual. Then there's another narration which states that Yazid the accursed, Yazid the despicable, he fell in love with a non-believer woman. And she also pretended to love him as how could she refuse to love him because he was apparently the ruler of the time, he was apparently the king of the time. So she said to him that come and meet me in the jungle of Hams. We will enjoy over there, we will have fun over there, make sure you come alone. Don't bring anyone else with you over there, I'll be alone as well and we will have fun, we will enjoy over there. So trapped in her love, Yazid, he reached over there with the intention of fulfilling his carnal desires. Now that woman was also present over there. So she made him drink alcohol and when he lost his senses due to alcohol, she took out her dagger which she had kept hidden and she attacked Yazid repeatedly saying that, Oh disloyal person, you were treacherous towards the grandson of your prophet and were not loyal to him. So what loyalty will you have towards me? She attacked him saying this repeatedly and threw his filthy corpse over there. Now for a few days, eagles, crows and vultures kept consuming his filthy body. And eventually, the companions of Yazid, they came in search of him and found his dead body over there. So what they did was they dug a hole over there and buried his dead body over there. This was the horrific, dreadful end of Yazid, the despicable, who was the initiator of this heinous crime. And all those who helped Yazid in this cause of his, in this heinous cause of his, they all met a dreadful end. And Yazid, the leader of all of them, this is the horrific end that he himself also met. So dear viewers of Madani channel, greed of wealth, rule and power renders a person useless, makes a person senseless. It makes a person forget his priorities. If you think about it, Yazid and his allies, they were blinded in the love of this dunya, in the love of wealth to the extent that they didn't even regard the relationship of the beloved Prophet and Imam Hussain They forgot the blessed lineage of Imam Hussain and the Ahlul Bayt. And just for the rule of this world, they crossed all the limits of oppressions and tyrannies upon Imam Hussain and the Ahlul Bayt. But eventually, what goes around, comes around. They all met a horrific end in this world and the punishment of the hereafter is in addition to this. So we should also ensure that we also stay away from the greed of wealth, status, fame and all these things and ensure to understand what our limits are, not cross the limits of the Sharia. Make sure that we do not cross the bounds of the Sharia falling free to the greed of wealth or any other worldly materialistic things and compromise our here after. We need to ensure that we part away, we move away from those who Ma'adullah talk ill of the Ahlul Bayt, talk ill of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala no. in fact talk ill of any of the companion of the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and make sure to remain amongst those who love the Ahlul Bayt, who devote themselves towards the Ahlul Bayt, who uh, mention and talk about the Ahlul Bayt, about Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala, no, who love all the companions of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who do not show any kind of disrespect towards the Ahlul Bayt or towards any of the companions of the beloved Prophet 
alayhi salatu wasalam because anyone who shows any kind of disrespect, any element of disrespect towards any of the companions of the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam or towards any of the Ahlul Bayt, he will be disgraced in this world and in the hereafter. The key to success is to love and respect the Ahlul Bayt and every single companion, Sahabi of the beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam wholeheartedly. If you talk about them, talk about them with respect. If you talk about them, talk about them out of love and reverence. Otherwise, there is no escape for us in the hereafter. This is what we learn from this account, this episode of today. Yazid and all his allies, they perished. They all met their dreadful end and are a sign of admonition for us. May Allah Almighty enable us to respect and love the Ahlul Bayt and every single companion of the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Sallu ala al-Habib Sallallahu Ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Life is not guaranteed at all But death is absolutely guaranteed upon all Life is not guaranteed at all But Death is absolutely guaranteed upon all. Life is not guaranteed at all. But death is absolutely guaranteed upon all.